Dragonfly nymphs are aggressive predators that live and hunt within the lush aquatic jungle. Presenting patterns in and around weeds, rocks, sunken timber, and debris where dragonfly nymphs live is challenging. The buoyant characteristics of my drag queen enable you to present this fly where dragonfly nymphs prefer to prowl. Here are the materials you will need. So let me tie you my drag queen. Um, it's a dragonfly nymph representation and dragonfly nymphs are to a stillwater fisherman what stonefly nymphs are to a river and stream angler. They're a big pattern generally and there's lots of features to imitate and they can become quite complex. So into the jaws of the vise um, you can use a number of different hook options. You could just use a standard uh, three extra long uh, nymph hook. This is a Daiichi 1730. It's a bent shank uh, nymph hook you can see there. Three extra long. Um, and this is a number six. You could also use a hook like a 1760 which is a three extra long uh, curved, uh, two extra heavy curved nymph hook as well. They work as well, but I just like this humped look, so we'll go with that. So the first thing we're going to do is attach our tying thread. And, and uh, this, th this fly has a foam head on it that we're going to form first for proportional purposes. So we like to uh, get the tying thread on in the front portion. Uh, like working with deer hair, you need a strong thread so you can get the thread pressure on and fine threads can cut through deer hair or um, foam. And we're using foam in this case. So the foam we're using, this is some of the Spirit Rivers 2mm fly foam in olive. And I am going to cut a slip of foam off the end. I'm going to cut a, a slip out right along the length, uh, sorry, across the width here that's equal distance to the hook gape. So you could use a paper cutter for this, or I've just got a pair of scissors, I'm just coming up. And if, you're, if you've got to air, air on the side of slightly narrower. Okay, so I've got that, it's about the hook gape here. And then what I'm going to do is come in and take my scissors and trim it to a point like on a picket fence. I'm going to take my tying thread back up, just back from the hook eye. Lay that on top, and I've tied it to a point simply to aid tying. So I hold the, the prepared foam slip sort of slightly in front of me on an angle, a couple of wraps around to secure it in place, and then kind of just twist everything up on top. And I want to secure that, and I'm trying to make my thread wraps vertical and not diagonal so I get a good even I don't have this sort of twisted off to one side so I'm just going to go back about half the distance of this the shank on this is kind of turned down I want to go about half that distance back and then we'll cover up the rest and let the thread hang so the next step is we're going to take the foam strip and I'm going to fold it over and I'm just going to push onto and against the hook eye and that will create a little divot. And then I'm going to take a dubbing needle at that point and right in the middle I'm going to pierce it straight through. And I'm going to do the same from the other side just to ensure I've got a hole right through the, I'll just do that again without my hand in the way, so I've gone through both directions, right through. And this ensures when I pull this over, because what we're going to do is just work the hook eye right through that hole. And if we haven't got a, a defined hole right through, we run the risk of tearing the foam at that point. So I'm going to um, wind the thread back. I'm going to hold the thread up so it's out of the way. I'm going to make sure that as best I can that this foam is directly underneath. It's not off to cock off to one side or the other and I'm just going to come around and make one loose wrap apply a little bit of tension, two loose wraps, more tension a third wrap, so constrict, just like deer hair, tight, tighter, tightest and then really put those wraps together, you could even put a little bit of super glue in there but a lot of times that isn't necessary so we've got a foam head tied in place that not only gives us some buoyancy, because dragonflies like to live 
in nasty places, in weed beds, around rock piles, sunken bush and timber, those kind of things. Not exactly a fun place to throw a fly. So this fly has a definite buoyant undertone to it. So you can work the fly on a sinking line, short leader, and work the fly just over those sort of debris, if you will. And the, the logic is the fly is going to be buoyant enough to walk over the tops of that and be silhouetted just above that structure where the trout are foraging. So we've got a natural foam head like this that looks just like a natural dragonfly nymph. So we use the foam not only for its function of buoyancy but also its form to suggest a dragonfly nymph's head. So we have to do a little artwork to it first. So the first thing we're going to do is darken the top. So I've got a dark olive green permanent marker and I'm just going to come up on top and this is sort of the trimming deer hair equivalent of foam is coloring it with markers because you can spend hours doing this kind of thing and this concept of doing a foam head was introduced to me by a British Columbia tire by the name of Dave Robinson he's a very innovative little tire as well it's just a great uh, feature so there's the darkened spot and now we're just going to beat it up if you will we're going to put some foam eyeballs on this a black eyes rather so we're just going to take a black permanent marker and just darken in those eyes and do the same on the other side and then I'm just going to take the marker and just allow it to come up onto the top and this doesn't have to be you know, geometrically perfect or anything like this the fish can't tell this I think this is more for us we just like it to look like the real thing. Again, as I said in the introduction, this is a fly, or dragonflies as a tying genre, are much like stoneflies. There's just lots of things to imitate there. And we've got a little bit of a clear spot there that I can see. Just a little dab on the front of it to block it out. I think I got it there. And we leave the underside light, uh, just to suggest the lighter underside that the natural nymphs have. And there's a few clear spots over here, so I use the narrow end of the olive marker to fill that in. And we let that sort of dry for a few seconds. Um, when tying in production, this is a step I would do um, en masse. Six flies I want to do, I put six head assemblies on. But to coat the head, I'm going to use some Softex. It's a clear, flexible coating, and it protects the, the head work, if you will. So it'll, it stays, it'll stay the color. And So we're just going to take a dubbing needle a little bit on there and just sort of scatter that all around little as little as little as more you can always add stuff but if you just coat this um, you could run into trouble and just have it all dripping all over the place so there you have that's the kind of thing you would do the heads all coated and that'll dry soon enough we're just simply protecting the artwork as I call it the next thing we're going to do is carry on down the hook and cover our hook shank with tying thread. Got the hook hanging right at the base. For the part of the body component is a blend of dubbing and crystal chenille. So the first thing I do, this is a called a peacock olive crystal chenille. You could use olive, you could use brown, sometimes you could even use gold if you will and mix with the, the dark olive dubbing we're going to do. It's an interesting uh, highlights to it as well. Lots of uh, different combinations here. So I'm just going to tie this in right at the base of the tail. This is probably a four inch, four and a half inch length. We're just going to tuck that along and then we're going to come in and tie in our underbody. So I'm going to advance the tying thread forward right up to the point where the, the junction where the hook shank bends down. That's another benefit of this style of hook is you've got definable points on the hook to make sure your proportions are right. You don't end up accidentally crowding um, the head area of the fly. Now we're going to put a foam underbody in. You could certainly use sheet foam folded over, but you can also buy, uh, I believe Wapsi distributes these, um, are preformed foam bodies. These are a slim body, about seven eighths of an inch long. So they kind of, if you look at them, they kind of already have that dragonfly nymph shape to them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this because I want to tie this in place 
I'll just see if I can get this to sit on the hook, but I'm going to, it did. So I'm going to tie this in place from the tying thread where the thread is hanging back to the base. So I'm going to have to cut the front off. So I'm just going to come in here at that point, take my scissors, I'm going to come back on an angle like this, and then just come in on the sides and trim it a bit to a point. Not a defined picket point, but just a narrower point to aid the tie-in. And I'm going to come in, hold it at that point, and really, it's just a little bit of the foam sticking out between my thumb and forefinger, really a lot of thread pressure to tie that in. So that's on there. Now I'm going to take my thread, and using controlled wraps, but you can see they're not that tight, because if I really add a lot of compression, I'm just going to squash the foam down, and I'm going to lose some buoyancy. I'm going to lose a little bit when we overwrap it with a dub body anyway. So we come down, we just want to keep it on top of the shank, so we don't negatively affect the gape of the hook. And then, just like we did at the front, now I use thread pressure at the back. So that's right in there. You could glue this up if you want, but that's not entirely necessary. Now, we're going to form the body. And the body is made by taking a dubbing loop full of dubbing and combining it with the crystal chenille. Kind of a unique thing. You end up with a dub body with little crystal chenille highlights sticking out of it. It also works great on other fly types too, such as crayfish patterns and large caddis pupa patterns. So to do this, we're going to uh, pull down a length of tying thread and form a dubbing loop. All right, so we pull back to show you how to do this technique of combining two materials together uh, using a dubbing loop, a very useful technique. So to start with, I'm going to take my thread forward a little bit. I'm going to form a dubbing loop that is about one inch, half inch or so shorter than the crystal chenille. Very important. So I come down to about this point. I'll show you. I'm going to put my finger in right here and form that dubbing loop back up. Very important that the dubbing loop itself, and I'm just going to flip this over to close it up because we're in a tight space, that the dubbing loop itself, and we'll just at this point take the tying thread right out of the picture back up to the front area of the fly, that the dubbing loop is shorter than the crystal chenille, which hopefully you can see here is. Okay, so we've got the dubbing loop formed here shorter than the crystal chenille. And your choice of dubbing tool is important. We're going to use a cow bird style dubbing tool. Get these at Dr. Slick. It's a neat uh, looking tool. We need that hook style. It works best. So we're going to put that into the dubbing loop and sort of just let it hang. It's going to drop that down a bit. For the body, lots of choices out there. I'm going to use some Arizona Semi Seal. This is color number 16 uh, Peacock. And we're just going to take a clump of the dubbing out of the package. I'm going to mix it up a little bit just to break it apart. Anything that's been sort of compacted due to packaging, things like that. And then I'm just going to take a pinch out of the clump. And we don't want very much. I should be able to see clearly through. You can clearly see through this. Open the loop at the bottom. Insert the dubbing and push up to the top and just load the loop repeatedly like this open at the bottom right up to the top and you want to get nice consistent uh, amount of dubbing into the loop open at the top all the way down and there's the loop uh, pretty well loaded, just like that. Now, we're going to take the uh, crystal chenille, come down parallel to the loop, see if we can get it underneath. I'm going to come up under the hook, make one complete turn, still holding the tag end, and hold that off at a 90 degrees perpendicular to the loop and give it a few twists. And so now you trap the crystal chenille within the dubbing loop and you're just going to twist it up and keep twisting, twisting, twisting until those fibers start to radiate out 90 degrees to the loop and at first glance it looks like that crystal chenille swallowed up all of the dubbing but it didn't, it sort of all twisted in there when you wrap it up it sort of all miraculously comes back so we get that 
twist it up. We can pull out any plumps that we see. We could even perhaps give it a little bit of a brush just to trap any fibers that might have got twisted in. We'll give it another little brush later. And now we're just going to turn this dubbing loop. It's on the tip here. I'm going to push it up into the notch and I'm just going to start winding. So I'm going to dub the body in the same manner that I tied that foam down in that the first two wraps are quite tight and then I sort of back off the tension so I'm using controlled wraps and we're just going to work our way forward up to the tying thread and at this point then I start I've got a couple of turns left then I get a little tighter again One more turn and then we'll just tie this off. So come in, on top, on top, in front, in front. We'll sweep all that other material back in a second. Trim away the excess and then take our... Just smooth all this down. This is the thorax area. And we can come in and we can brush this out a little bit. So we've got the body tied off. We can come in, sweep as many fibers as we can back. We've got a couple that are sticking forward here. It's not going to really matter at the end of the fly. It's just fly tires. We can be compulsively neat sometimes for no good reason. <laughs> um, and then we can just come in and sort of trim this, if you will, to the bit of a dragonfly shape. So we can extend this back a little bit. Um, you want it with your dragon nymphs, particularly when you're imitating the the, the crawling nymphs. Um, two families is sort of crawlers and, and uh, sprawlers and the crawling nymphs are probably the rock stars of the dragonfly clan. They get all the press. They're aggressive predators. Um, they crawl around actively hunting and even though they look big um, you want to make sure the widest part of any dragonfly nymph is its head area and about that portion of the body. So we're a little wider here but, but you got to remember when this gets wet it's going to slim down. So don't be in a rush to make big fat obese nymphs when you are uh, trying to imitate uh, the darning the darner nymphs we nickname them the Anishidae uh, family of nymphs. Now if you're imitating a sprawler they're usually on smaller hooks and eight to six would be a big one and they're kind of squat and spider like and, and uh, in a future tying seminar we'll uh, session here we'll tie a, a, a nymph specifically targeting uh, the sprawler nymph. So, Anyway, you can see that uh, body. It's got lots of neat little highlights sticking out of it uh, all over the place. And we've got little fibers everywhere. Just like deer hair, you can spend hours trimming this, this stuff. So now we just got to finish it off. It's, it's almost done. We're going to put a set of legs on it and a little bit of dubbing. So for the legs, I'm going to use some dyed olive guinea fowl. You can also use dyed yellow. It gives you an interesting contrast. Uh, in the UV2 materials, the chartreuse is interesting. You can even use pheasant rump. So what we're going to do is take that tying thread forward almost so it's hanging straight behind the head. And I'm choosing a feather. In this case here, I like the ones with the finer dots on them. I just like that speckled look that it provides, that salt and pepper uh, configuration, if you will. So the fibers reach back about the length of the body. And if you can, this one's a pretty good one. It's pretty thin stemmed up here too, so it's going to be pretty easy to wind. Because we're going to take this feather, and I'm just going to strip away the flue at the base like this to prepare it. I'm going to come in, trim away the majority of the stem. You can take your thumb and forefinger and rake it over just to break the grain a little bit. makes it a little easier to wind. I'm going to tie this in wet fly style. Tie that in place. We'll just secure the rest of that stem back. Okay. And then we're just going to take our hackle pliers and attach them after we take a half turn positioning wrap. So we're going to take this, make sure that those the, fe the feather positions itself so that the convex or most prominently marked side of the feather is facing the front. And we're just going to make one complete wrap is all you really need. Dragonflies have six legs. One complete wrap, kind of zigzag the thread through. It's a bit disheveled right now, but we'll fix that. We'll trim off the excess. Trim out that tip section. And we're just going to take our 
fingers and manipulate and preen the fibers. And now we're going to sweep them back. So I'm going to actually divide them as best I can on top. And if it's a few little stragglers, we're going to trim those out later. So I'm going to come with my thumb and forefinger, moisten them a little bit, and just down and back just sweep those fibers and if they all don't come that's no big deal and just put a wrap around two wraps around to control them and then we can just make sure that they're dispersed this is just sort of a it's almost like this fly started out when I created it as like a foam body carry special with a little bit of a f imitative foam head on it and we just want to push these around so these fibers are free to move and suggest the legs of a jetting dragon or one that's crawling uh, along the bottom because they kind of crawl along the bottom. They hunt like a cat. They have the ability to um, shoot water out of their rectal gill chamber which allows them to dart along um, when they're fleeing or when they make that final pounce. But a lot of times they crawl very slowly and stalk their prey like a cat. They're very, very efficient predators. I'm just going to take that and we're just going to again wrap that back a little further just to further flow them down you can pinch them a little bit just to get them to flow and just make sure that they're distributed around so you can come in and I'm just making sure again most of them trail underneath because although they're not all that stiff they will act as a bit of a weed guard. To finish the fly off just take a little bit more of our um, semi seal in this case the peacock color uh, dubbing and rather than form a dubbing loop I want a little bit more of a less scruffy appearance so I'm just going to take some of these fibers and using good firm one directional twisting so I'm twisting from left to right to wrap that around the tying thread and you can see I'm still not using a lot of dubbing I'm basically turning the thread color fuzzy a fuzzy peacock green and I'll do a two inch noodle and start from there and see how we're doing and all we're doing is basically covering up our thread work here and put a little thorax directly behind the fly. And then all we're going to do is a couple of wraps around and I'm going to spin this thread clockwise and that will twist the wraps up so it's narrower. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue in this case right on the thread. Give it another spin or two. Once, twice to get it in there. Dig out my whip finisher. Once, twice, three times, maybe fourth for luck, pull it in, give it a good tug, and trim away the excess. And you can come in with your dubbing brush if you like, and give it a final sort of brush and preen. But there you have it, the finished drag queen. Um, this is a fly we offer for sale as well in our online, mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. You can pick it up there as well if you're interested in seeing how these flies look. But that's the fly there. You can see a simp relatively simple dressing as far as dragonfly nymphs go. Um, it's got the basic requirements, the size, the shape, uh, the color, and the behavior with the material. So this is a fly that incorporates not only the dubbing and the guinea fowl uh, legs here to suggest the natural nymph, but that buoyant underbody and head is going to help keep this fly out of trouble off the bottom so you're not afraid to throw it in harm's way. There you have it, the drag queen. For more information on fly fishing and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. In addition, you can also follow me through my social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.